Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome all to our worship today, on this uh, Sunday, this uh, the third Sunday after Easter. As we uh, gather together, we do have just a few announcements that we'd like to begin with. Uh, first and foremost, a, a really happy, very wonderful announcement, and that is the call day service at Concordia Seminary, St. Louis, will be this Tuesday, April 28, 2020. Now, normally we don't make a huge deal about call day. We do mention it sometimes in our prayers uh, each year. But this year is very special in that a son of the congregation, uh, Max Fisher, who has been studying now for uh, almost eight years to become a pastor, is going to receive his first call this Tuesday night. Uh, I believe the call service is at 7 o'clock Central Time, so 8 o'clock our time. I believe it's going to be live broadcast. Uh, we do have in the announcements uh, that you can look up on both our website and our, our, our um, Facebook uh, the where to go. I will read through all of that, uh, but, but the links to how to get to that. Uh, I guess you could also start with just the Concordia Seminary St. Louis website. will probably help you get there also. Um, so Pastor and I are very excited. Uh, and Pastor, when he first came here, took the call here, immediately began to work with Max also in helping him get ready for seminary. And uh, so we both, we both have been working with him and so excited for him. And congratulations to the Fisher family and especially to you, Max, uh, and receiving uh, your first call uh, Tuesday night. And um, so we'll see how that goes and uh, great news. We do have a bit of sad news then to follow that up. Uh, our small group communion services that Pastor and I were very excited about, and everybody else seemed to be very excited about, we have to postpone again uh, due to health and safety. Our government has asked for more stay at home to at least the beginning of May. And so what we're going to do is postpone till next week and starting on Monday, prayerfully, hopefully, our hope is to resume uh, to do those uh, small group communion services. You can find that uh, online at at Sign Up Genius. There's the link is the link is provided on our Facebook page, but we'll we'll be reposting that this week, so that you can sign up if you haven't signed up in the past. And and if you uh, haven't signed up, you can sign up. And also, if you have signed up, do you just want to check, make sure that your names are in there? Or yeah, you, you want to when 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 you sign up, uh, yeah. Check to make sure if you have signed up that you still are there. You should be. Uh, and if you are signing up for the very first time, uh, please, when it asks you the quantity, that's the amount of people that are going to be coming to the service, uh, not the amount of people that will be communing that day. Very so good. make sure you put your whole party in there. Super. Yep. Also during this time of uh, this virus that we are facing, uh, the church has begun a fund, uh, our COVID-19 care fund. Uh, that fund is, is not only monetary, so obviously if you have funds you'd like to donate to that, or if you have a need, uh, financial need, please call the office. So either way, if you want to volunteer to, or give some funds to that, call the office or uh, call the office if you have a financial need. And, but what, else, and, uh, and what Pastor is saying there is it's not necessarily just money, well, but if you have not to go, oh, okay. yeah, so, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So that's that's the fine. That's all right. Yeah, he, he wants to. He, that's how we work. So the financial. That's the financial piece. But there's also more to this. This uh, we want to also help in other ways. And so if if we have several people now who have volunteered their time, their talents, and helping with many uh, different things, and also other material goods. And so if you have some things like that or want to be on that kind of a list, uh, you're welcome to call the office. If you have needs corresponding to that, at home, uh, deliveries, uh, being uh, taken somewhere or something gotten for you or something delivered for you, please uh, call the office and let us know. Uh, so, Pastor, why don't you go ahead and continue with that Feed the Front Line. Yeah, there's another awesome opportunity for us to care for our community, and that's called Feed the Front Lines. Uh, we have partnered with the Seymour Chamber of Commerce, uh, I talked with Dan Robson, who's the president there, and they already have gathered 
uh, some monies for the next several weeks to provide a meal, a dinner, once a week for our firefighters. Just a way that we can share with our community that we're thinking about you, we're praying about you, and we care for you as you care for uh, those that are sick and injured at this uh, during this strange time. If you have a passion for that and you would like to donate uh, to that fund to help provide a meal through one of our local small business eateries in town, uh, please contact the church office and we'd love to uh, share with you how you can do that. Uh, and, and that's that announcement, Thank Pastor. You. Thank you. Um, also, uh, keeping going, Youth Night uh, tonight. April 26th this evening at 6 p.m. No, nope, sorry, 6.30. It's a misprint in our bulletin, but it is correct on our, on our other announcements. Uh, but 6.30 uh, this, e this, this evening, um, and uh, we will um, be having our Zoom youth meeting. Uh, scavenger hunt. Um, we're, we're really excited. We're really excited about doing a scavenger hunt. Uh, it went really well with our kids for Christ. Uh, we're hoping to do the same thing with our youth and and just uh, connect again and 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 be in God's word together and see each other's faces. Uh, if you would like to be a part of that, please contact Pastor Correo. Uh, you can either text him or you can email him. We need email addresses so we can send out that invite so you can participate in that Zoom meeting. And that's probably an underline right there of what he just said. We absolutely can. You can't be a part of the meeting unless you email us so yep. that we can invite you. And also, if you need to, you can, you're welcome to also email the office and we'll yep. uh, try to watch for those too. Um, so uh, the other thing, uh, just so, because these announcements have been so difficult getting out, so by way of communication, the Redeemer Lutheran Foundation is taking applications, like to take your application if you want to be a church work student and are studying for that, they want to help you with your education financially. Uh, you need to fill out those forms for that. Also, St. John Lutheran School Sowers is looking for a principal. Uh, please be aware of that. Um, also, um, just a note, I had some people saying, you know, Pastor, I really miss Holy Communion and and I, I, the way our conversation went, it sounded like as if they were assuming that us pastors are communing. Uh, just so you know, we are fasting with you. Uh, we too have not had Holy Communion since the last time we gathered together uh, in mid-March. So um, please be aware of that. I also want to, uh, I've been trying to say this each time, but uh, it's very important for Pastor and I to help to, to say a thank you to those who are helping this to happen. Pastor himself has been working very diff uh, very long hours to make sure this happens, uh, but also we've had help. Uh, Sarah Reedy has been coming and graciously playing the organ every time we gather uh, for us, and that's been wonderful. Ron Duncan has been here too and working on the recording uh, of it so that it can go on the radio, but also Ron has been working with the new equipment that we have purchased to try to help get that set up for, for, for doing this in the future in a little better way with, with newer cameras and equipment. Also, working our cameras are, are Maisie Caudill and Abigail Correo. They're working the cameras and singing and responding to the liturgy in the background uh, for, for, for our aid and help in worship. Um, so, I believe that's it, Pastor. Anything that's, else? You that's think all of? I got, too. So. Well, let's go ahead then, and we will begin our worship this day. We're going to sing. Opening hymn is. Good Christian friends, rejoice and sing. Yep, it's all printed there for you. If you do have your hymnal, it's hymnal number 475.
For those that are following along in the hymnal, our order of service this morning is Divine Service Setting 5, which begins on page 213 in our hymnals. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings of death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We speak responsibly the introit as printed in our bulletin. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for the Lord, for there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. We sing the hymn of praise, Alleluia, Jesus is risen, hymn number 474. You may be seated.
you raise up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people rescue from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue with the reading of God's Word. The first reading for the third Sunday of Easter comes from Acts, the second chapter. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this cro crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue with the gradual from Matthew chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 2, and Psalm chapter 8. We speak together. Christ, Christ has, has risen, risen from, from the dead. dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle lesson comes from 1 Peter, the first chapter. Peter writes, If you call on him as Father, who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, Conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you are ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart, since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. For... All flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of reverence for Christ and reading the Holy Gospel, I invite you to please stand for the gospel processional that comes into your midst. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, you O Lord. Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, named Cleopas, answered, answered him, saying, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? 
And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, besides all this, it is now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And so they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. And so he went in to stay with them, and he was at the table with them, and he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We are now bold to confess our faith by using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which is found printed in the back inside cover of our hymnal and also printed in our worship bulletin. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now sing the hymn of the day. Who are you who walk in sorrow? Hymn number 476. This has a familiar tune as we find it also in one of our Advent hymns.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for this morning's message is especially the gospel reading for today from Luke 24. While they were walking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad, and then one of them named Cleopas answered him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in, the, in these days? And he said to them, what things? And the two followers, the two disciples of Jesus, began to explain to him all the things that have happened. How he was crucified, died, buried. But then some of their company reported that they went to the tomb and only saw angels, but did not see the body of Jesus. And Jesus spoke up and said, Oh, foolish ones, and slow to heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. This is the word of the Lord. Our text for this third Sunday of Easter just starts immediately right there at the start of our gospel reading. We are walking with the two men heading to the city of Emmaus. Followers, disciples of Jesus on the road to Emmaus. They had just witnessed the death of Jesus and even heard that some were saying that he had risen from the dead. But they were not sure what to think or feel. They were confused and hope seemed to be slipping away. They were talking about all the things that had just occurred in Jerusalem. The crucifixion of the one that they followed. And now reports that Jesus wasn't in the grave, but an angel reported that he had risen from the dead. And as they were discussing these things, a stranger appears and walks with them. A stranger to them because Jesus kept them from recognizing him. As they speak with this stranger, we can see from our text that indeed their hearts and minds seem to be starting to fill with doubts, distrust, and hopelessness. Hope and faith seem to be slowly leaving them. Even though they had witnessed Jesus dying on the cross for the sins of the whole world, yet without the proof, without the certainty, without the comfort of the resurrection from the dead, they did not fully realize yet all that Christ had accomplished they did, they did not have that sure and certain living faith that was not fully theirs in their hearts yet. And so their hearts are beginning to grow cold as they walk the road to Emmaus. For us walking through this world on the road of life, if our hearts are not nourished and strengthened, Regularly, If our hearts are not made certain with the comfort of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our hearts will grow cold and our hearts will fill with doubt, distrust, and begin to lose hope. It is so easy, you see, for our sinful hearts to grow cold to the joy of the resurrection, and to lose sight of the hope and certainty and comfort it gives our hearts, especially as we face uncertainties of life, as we face sin, as we faith, face death, as we face the temptations and fiery darts of the evil one. In our world today, there are many kinds of hearts. There are sad hearts, Hearts weighed down with the weight of sorrow, suffering, and sin. There are troubled hearts. Hearts perplexed by the problems of life. There are weak hearts. Hearts that struggle with trials and temptations of life. There are doubtful hearts. Hearts that are uncertain whether Christ really walks with them and works for their good. There are lukewarm hearts. Hearts that are indifferent to the things eternal and the revelancy of God's word. There are cold hearts. 
hearts not burning bright with faith and zeal in the living Lord. In order to keep us confused, doubting, troubled, in order to make our hearts grow cold, the world, Satan, and even our own sinful natures do not want us then to be in God's word. They do not want us to listen regularly to God's word so that our hearts stay filled with doubt, a lack of confidence, and hopelessness. Amid our struggles, in the midst of whatever is filling your hearts, doubt, distrust, even hopelessness, the risen Christ speaks to us today, every day on the road of life. He speaks to us through his word, and through his word he breaks bread with us and reveals himself again as the risen Lord. Once again he kindles our faith and brings our hearts from hopelessness to hearts burning with abounding, overflowing joy. As Jesus spoke to the two men on the road to Emmaus, his words rekindled faith in their hearts and gave them hope. Jesus opened their minds and their hearts to see him as a fulfillment of all the scriptures. That's what the Bible does. The Bible points us to Jesus as the anointed one, the Messiah, the Christ, who has come into this world to live, suffer, die, and rise again to save the world and us. And the effect on the two men and on us through his, this saving message, through this gospel, their hearts are set on fire. They are given a living hope, a living faith. They are convinced and made certain of their salvation. They said, were not our hearts burning within us as he talked to us? They believe that he was the promised Messiah and the risen Savior. They are filled with faith, with hope, and joy. They beg him then to stay because they want to hear more. They run to tell the disciples. There in Jerusalem, Jesus appears again to them and to the disciples. They are fearful. He expounds to them again the same scriptures. They are convinced and filled with joy and they announced to Thomas as well as we heard last week, we have seen the Lord. Thus Jesus, just Jesus opens their minds and warms their hearts through the scriptures. You know, I want to make a, just a, a small note as a pastor at this time. And Pastor Barlow and myself have really been talking about this almost every day. In this time as we listen to God's word and that word is working in our hearts, even through these means of the internet, I have gotten to hear more in the last month of people and their hunger and thirst to gather together and partake of God's word and his sacrament than probably my entire ministry together. You see, through his word, Christ rekindles faith, faith in our hearts. And now we see the risen Christ and firmly believe in him. Our minds are opened once more and our hearts are warmed. Life no longer bogs us down with a sense of guilt, with, a, with worry about earthly things or fear of death. We live in a sense of immortality. I shall never die. Life is not hopeless. We have been born anew into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, as First Peter says. We do not walk alone in this life. We do not walk alone to the grave. The risen Christ promises, because I live, you shall live also. You see, our living, resurrected Lord changes everything. We have a living Savior in the midst of sorrows and joys, in the midst of life and death. We live by faith in him and the power of his resurrection. Alleluia, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Kind of snuck that one in. When we face a seemingly insurmountable problem that we believe Christ is risen, when we stand at the grave of a loved one that we have hope because Christ is risen, 
When we find our steps heavy, our spirits sagging, and our hearts growing cold, then we hear and taste in the scriptures the goodness of the Lord. Once again, he walks with us. He's always walking with us. He speaks to us in his word. He opens to us the scriptures. He opens our eyes to see. Sad hearts are filled with joy. Troubled hearts are filled with peace. Weak hearts are filled with strength. Doubtful and despairing hearts are filled with hope. Lukewarm hearts are filled with conviction. And cold hearts are burning with faith and hope. We know and believe that there is no sin he does not forgive. There is no hurt he does not heal. And there is no emptiness that he does not fill. He brings our hearts from hopelessness to hearts burning with certainty and joy. Amen. May the peace that passes us all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, I would normally announce that we will receive the offering. However, at this time, we will continue our service then with the offering prayer. Let us pray. Accept, O oh Lord, this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring for all of our goodness, all of your goodness and generosity with our songs of praises in our homes. Accept the tithes and offerings that your church may have the resources to proclaim your gospel and care for the poor and those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we add the family and friends of B.G. Brewer. We've been praying for uh, his wife, uh, and let me see if I can find her, Joyce. We've been praying for Joyce. That's, that's Shirley Ramey's friend that we have been praying for. And now we're praying for uh, Joyce and her family as they mourn the death of her husband, B.G. And we also add in our prayers this morning peace and comfort for the family and friends of Monica Adi. That's the sister-in-law uh, to Don and Nancy Adi. Uh, who depart life this past week. We also celebrate with Woody and Phyllis Turner, who celebrate 58 years this Tuesday. We go to the Lord in prayer. You have heard our pleas for mercy, O Lord, and given up your Son to be our Savior. Hear us now as we come to you on behalf of ourselves and all people according to their needs. Our hearts have burned within us, O Lord, as your word has been read and preached and proclaimed. Keep our faith from growing cold and grant us grace that we may not waver in faith or succumb to the temptations that the devil and the world and our sinful flesh place before us. Give to us and to our children receptive hearts that we may hear and hearing believe and believing be steadfast in this faith and hope all the days of our life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have cleansed us, O Lord, with the water and the word and baptism. You have marked us as your own people. Give to us grace that we may live out this faith in holy lives, lifting up your name and word and works for as long as we live. Guide us with souls purified by obedience to truth, that we may love one another earnestly, from a pure heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning, and we thank you for another year of married life that you have given Woody and Phyllis to celebrate 58 years this Tuesday. Open their hearts always to receive more of their love, more of your love, that their love for each other may never grow weary, but deepen and grow through every joy and sorrow shared. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Bless your church, O Lord, that she may welcome the stranger in Christ's name and manifest the unity of faith in the bonds of love. Gather together those who are separated and preserve their faith by your word until all precautions and shelter measures have passed. We ask that you will bless the president of our synod, Pastor Matthew Harrison, our district president, Pastor Daniel Brady, our 
circuit visitor pastor andrew rail and we pray for all pastors lord and those that are training for church work vocations we pray for abigail rail who's training and will be going to merrill wisconsin to serve as her internship as a dce we pray for jacob cyrus who is learning at the seminary in st louis and we pray lord for max fisher who is going to be called into your into your mission field lord as an under shepherd this tuesday that you O lord would bless each of us as we live in our callings of worship witness prayer and service lord in your mercy Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Guard our nation, O Lord, that we may enjoy peace and security in the face of threat and danger. Pre bless President Trump, our Congress, our governor, and all state and local officials, that they may fulfill their offices faithfully. Bless all emergency and medical workers and the members of the armed forces who protect us and teach, our, teach the nations the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Deliver us from all afflictions and grant us strength to bear our burdens. Hear us, O oh Lord, for those that we name before you this morning. Kathy Clark, Steve Davidson, Quinn Dobbs, Reese Engelking, Bill Ferguson Sr., Ray Friend, Carol Keezer, Chris Botchman, D. Rep, Karen Schroll, Tyler Cyrus, Brian Skinner, Linda Sutton, Angela Vogel, Mike Weiner, Joyce Brewer, Emily Edwards, Malachi Forbes, Kitty Herkian, Karen Hines, Bill Joyner, Susie McTavish, Cheryl Nairn, Laura Jo Rothwell, Karen Ryan, Amber Sprague, Nancy Stewart, Bryce Tomalian, real estater, Holly Boyles. We also pray for the family and friends of Monica Adi, the sister-in-law of Donna Nancy Adi, and also the family and friends of B.G. Brewer, that is the husband of Joyce Brewer. And those, O oh Lord, we name in our hearts. According to your gracious will, heal the sick, relieve those who suffer, comfort the grieving, and give peace to the dumb. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Stay with us, O oh Lord, and be our strength and weakness and our hope in time of despair. Your gracious will once kept the saints in faith, even unto death. Keep us, we pray, with them in your faith and fear that we may be found faithful when Christ comes again in his glory to bring the fulfillment of all things once and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. These things and whatever things we need, O oh Lord, we pray to grant us in the name of and for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose death has made full atonement for our sins, and whose resurrection has granted to us the promise of our own joyful resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing hymn with high delight. Let us unite hymn number 488. 